So in conducting case study analysis, because of the flexibility of case studies, there's no set formulaic way of going about the process of doing a case study or indeed the process of analyzing a case study. But there are some fundamental truths around case study. Now, generally, you will have some assumptions that you make in deciding upon your case as to what you're looking at. Because you could look at anything, because you've decided to look at something, there are some assumptions in that. Now, as a result, you can think through what might happen, what could occur in this case. Now, that can become a framework for analysis where prior to conducting your data collection, you set down what it is you expect to have happen. And then you compare the data that you collect that represents what did happen with what you expected to have happen. And that comparison can provide you with an, a framework for analysis. Now, there are some other approaches. Um, you can look at your motivations for why you've done certain elements, what, what you've looked at, um, why you chose to examine those aspects. And you can conduct some analysis of um, that element. You can also look at uh, case studies in a discovery way, where you're simply trying to understand what is occurring. Now, again, you should try to form some hypotheses as to what are the possible things that could occur. Then when you conduct your data analysis or your data collection and your analysis, you can then use that data to try to disprove various hypotheses. So if an hypothesis, a hypothesis is that something happens and you look for the data that, that did happen and it's not there, then that disproves that possible option, that hypothesis. And if you've got like five or six hypotheses, then you can look at the data and see which ones are disproved. And the ones that are remaining, ideally, if it comes down to just one, is more likely to be um, a correct understanding of what has occurred. So there are ways that we can frame our analysis of case studies by bringing these processes into play. Another approach is to looking at the time series where we could expect certain things to occur over time. Now, if we see something occur and then something else occurs soon afterwards, and we see that occurring several times throughout the study, we could make some assumptions, some inference that there's a causal relationship. If it's a rainy day and more students are getting in trouble and being sent to the office, and we see that occurring every time there's a rainy day, there are more students being sent to the office, then we could make some uh, correlation between rainy days and students being disruptive. So that's where if we collect enough data, we can start seeing patterns. And it's these patterns that we can report on in our case study analysis. Okay, so when we have sufficient qualitative data, we can then explore the patterns that exist. Um, again, we should try to establish hypotheses and try to prove and disprove, try to disprove hypotheses and have the remaining ones um, be ones that we then assert as potential answers to the research question that we're exploring. But we can also use what's called uh, multiple case studies and synthesize across multiple case studies where we have a, a range of different case studies and we look at what's happened and look at the patterns that have existed in those different case studies and try to see some relationship between what's occurred in one school, for example, and in another school and in another school. And if there were certain things, um, certain properties of a particular school, 
did we see the same sort of events happening in other schools with similar properties? So it may be schools that have large populations of students versus small schools that we see certain things occurring. And we can then again make some inferences that the size of the school, the population of students in a school may have an impact upon certain things occurring, whereas they don't occur in smaller schools. By looking at the data that we've collected and the patterns that we are able to see in that data. Now I've given you a reading to look at, um, a brief refresher on the case study uh, method and examine that and it provides a particular perspective around uh, the conduct of case studies and we'll explore it further in the tutorial.